Hi folks and welcome to the next We Paint Minis painting tutorial. This time we'll be painting some white scars. I've chosen a reaver for this tutorial as most of my other Primaris that I've painted have already been painted so I hadn't painted a reaver yet I thought I'd give this a go. The premise is very much the same as it is with the Primaris so you can transfer this over onto a Primaris if you wish. Before we get on to painting the model, I wanted to show you how I sub-assembly my models and how I secure them in order to paint them individually. By no means do you have to sub-assembly your models, you can paint them whole if you wish, I just find it easier. What I do, get an old sprue, whether it be the one you left over for the model that you're painting in particular, or an old one. I always recommend keeping them by the way. Good bit good bit of advice there. Keep your sprues. You can use them for so many different things. I can go over that in, in another video. Cut a good length of it and then use a little bit of super glue just to stick it onto a part where it's not going to be painted or a part that's a contact point. Do not use plastic glue. It will melt it together. It'll be very difficult to take it apart afterwards. Just use super glue. It's very brittle. It can be snapped off easily. And then what I do is I use those as means as a holder. So whether that be sticking it into some blue tack later on or into a, a painting handle or something like that. I also use it to separate the piece from whatever surface I'm priming the model on. So I really recommend doing that. I love using that and it really helps me out when I'm painting and priming. Right, that's enough waffling about that now. <laughs> Let's get to the actual painting since we've gone past the start of it. What we're going to do, we're going to prime the model using Corax White. It's going to give us a nice base for the other paints we're going to be using, the reds, the yellows and so forth. And then we're going to paint all the areas that we want to be black with Black Templar contrast paint. Now, that would be the Under Armour bits, any of the recessed areas. So it's going to be pin line washing sort of thing using contrast paint. So I really recommend using your smallest brush if you're going to do this. You don't have to do this, but this is how I get the clean recessed lines. This is how I do it. So I do it with this first and then we move on to the next color. two hours later. Once I've done a couple of layers of the Black Templar contrast paint, I then get some Abaddon Black and just go over the Under Armour bits, the belt and the weird vent strappy things just to ensure that the black is really rich and dark. I wouldn't do this in your recessed areas because there's no need. However, for the Under Armour bits and all the bits that I mentioned before, definitely go over with some black just to neaten it up and make it a lot more rich. Now to some, this is where it might get a little bit odd. We're going to start painting the white, but we're not actually going to use white. We're going to use grey. I mentioned this in the previous video before where if you're painting white, it's always recommended to use an off-white colour instead. Because white is so highly reflective, as soon as it is white or it's in an area that emits other light or colour or anything like that, it is no longer white. It's an, an off-white or it reflects the colour in which it is around or surrounding. So what I do here is I use Celestra Grey. It's a bluey white, but I find it works really well for my white scars. I do water it down quite heavily as it can get quite chalky and clumpy. Just be careful when you're going over it that you don't get it in the recessed areas. The benefit of painting the panels this way is that you do not have to be overly neat on top because we're going to edge highlight later. So just get a few thin coats of Celestial Grey over, avoid the recesses and you'll be set. Now 
once you've finished applying those coats of celestial grey we're going to go in with some dried bark and we're going to paint all the leather so that's the pouches on the legs and all the belts and buckles that hold those pouches together Next up, we're going to block our red in. We're not actually going to use red, as in direct red, like Mephiston red or anything like that. We're going to use Doom Ball Brown. It's a really cool colour. I like it a lot. It's, it's really nice. And it's very red as well. I find it gives a good base colour for my reds. And I use it as a way to shade the red as well. So if you apply the Doom Ball Brown as a shade all over the areas in which you want to do red, you can then build up your highlights on the areas that are going to be red going forwards. So use a small brush for this, relatively watered down, and just go over all the areas you want to be red. I'll also be going over some of the freehand elements with this colour as well, which you'll probably see a bit further on in this clip. Now I'm by no means a freehand master, but I feel like I do quite a good job on these white scars when it comes to their markings. Basically what I do is I use the Doom Ball Brown, as mentioned before, and I break down the shapes that I want to achieve into very basic geometric shapes. So triangles, squares, rectangles, oblongs, anything that's a shape, I just break it down into its smallest possible components. I then use very small pinpoint dabs of paint in the areas I want to start and end the shape. So if you look at this clip here, I start with a point at the top, I then move it down towards the edge of the chest plate, and I do that a few times to establish, eventually, two triangles. I do the same technique on the knee pad and on the leg. So that's the left knee pad that's the one my left your left his left and the right leg break the shape down into geometric shapes and use fine strokes to connect those small little dots that you've created together you can touch up using celestial gray over the bits that you've gone maybe a bit wiggly on or anything like that if you're not happy but i really do recommend that you try this technique and see if you can do it and see if it improves your hand control or anything like that it's fun. It's For me, it's satisfying. It's a bit sadomasochistic, I guess, but I enjoy doing it. If you folks would like to see a more in-depth tutorial about how I do my freehand work, then let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. Now you can see I've finished doing those markings and I filled in those shapes using Doom Ball Brown completely. Now, however, what I'm doing is using some Nolan oil just to go over the small little skull and kind of cross sword thing that's on his chest. I do not use Nolan oil to shade the red that I've just done. I just leave it as it is. Anything pronounced like an Aquila or this particular emblem, I use Nolan oil just to shade. So using Mephiston Red, watered down to a glaze consistency. So they refer to the consistency of glazes as milk. I don't know why it's strange, but a milk consistency. And then what you want to do is you want to drag the paintbrush from the area in which the transition from a darker to light begins. So on this case, knee pad two-thirds of the way down and then drag it up to the highest point and where the light is hitting the most. Leave that and do that a few times. Do that in all the areas in which are pronounced and are highlighted by the light. Move the area in which you start to apply the glaze higher up than what you initially started it at and eventually what you'll get is a nice transition from the darker Doom Ball Brown to the lighter Mephiston Red.
Once you're happy with that, I then use Evil Sun Scarlet to do an edge highlight on all the areas in which you've just highlighted with Mephisto Red. At this point, I only highlight those areas, and I use another colour to highlight the areas in which I still do more brown. We'll go into that bit shortly, but for now, just use Evil Sun Scarlet and do a nice fine edge highlight around the areas in which you've just done. As mentioned, to edge highlight Doom Ball Brown, we're going to use Kislev Flesh. It's quite an odd colour to use, but I find it really does accentuate the red, whether that be the red in the Doom Ball Brown or a Mephiston Red or Corn Red, something like that. As mentioned, just do fine edge highlights just on the areas and where the Doom Ball Brown is still visible. So generally, that's on the lower areas where you haven't painted the Mephiston Red over before. Switching over to the black areas, I use Dark Reaper to edge highlight all the areas in which I want to be highlighted. So that's the belt, the under armour bit, the neck, collar, under thingamajig. I have no idea what that is. It's a weird, you know what I mean. And also the sheath for the dagger. Don't have to be too neat with this. Um, try and be as neat as you can, obviously. But if you do go a bit thick and a bit heavy, you can touch it back up again with some Abaddon Black. It's not the end of the world. And then to finish that black off, I do a fine edge highlight of Fenrisian Grey. That's on the belt, the Under Armour thing, the sheath of the dagger, the bolt pistol casing as well, the weird neck collar thing, the vents on the side and on the back. Yes, I'm I'm gesticulating here, you can't see what I'm doing, but those areas, just, just highlight those areas of Fenrisian Grey. Back onto the leather, we're going to do the same technique as I used in my Corn Champion video. So basically we're going to get some Bane Blade Brown, relatively watered down, and we're going to stipple it along the edges, or the harder edges, of all the leather. So that's the areas in which we're probably worn down the most, so the corners, the edges where the panels meet each other, the belts, the flaps, things like that. Just stipple it on ever so slightly, all the way around instead of a solid edge highlight. And then to finish off the highlighting of the leather, we use some Carrick Stone to do the most daintiest of stippling on the prominent corners. Make sure you don't go over the Bane Blade Brown completely, so just do some small stippling and that will give you a nice worn leather effect. Also, if you want to, you can use the Carrick Stone to do some small little lines coming from the flat panel areas towards the edges. It gives the impression of scratched leather. And to finish that off, I just use a liberal coat of Agrax Earthshade straight from the pot to tie those colours together. In 
in the world of miniature painting, white can be considered quite a tough colour to paint, along with things like yellow as well. I really do hope that this tutorial does debunk some of those concerns and fears that people have. And if you are interested in a tutorial on how I paint my yellow, then let me know in the comments below and I will do that as well. It's not as scary as you think, and I know that all of you can do it. What I'm going to do now is edge highlight the white or celestial grey with Orthwan grey. And I'm going to edge highlight all of the panels because I... <laughs> because I'm nuts, I'm absolutely bonkers, but I, and I've mentioned this before, I think I've mentioned it before, I really do believe that edge highlighting the panels of Space Marines makes them look amazing. That's my personal opinion, that doesn't have to be the opinion of everyone else, I think that's what it achieves, and it's very cathartic to me, even if it is a little bit crazy. So, use your Orthan Grey, water down, and edge highlight those panels and try not to go crazy in the process. Two thousand years later. Now that you've finished questioning your life choices, let's move on to the metallics. Quite a simple one. This one I use lead belcher to to base paint the vent things on the backpack, the undersides of the flappy things on the backpack, the blade of the dagger, any metallic parts on the bolt pistol, the buckles and latches on the leather pouches, and the weird face vent things that he has on his helmet. Also the grapnel that's in the holster. Over the base of lead belcher I use a straight out of the pot wash of nylon oil. Simple, just slap it on, wick up any excess that you may have. You still want it to darken down but not to the point where you might as well not put the lead belcher down on the first place. Coming back in with lead belcher just to bring the brightness of that metallic back. Only on the areas where you would think the light is hitting. Now using some Retributor armor, I paint the hilt, the pommel, and the parts of the sheave that aren't black. So that the tip and the bit in which the blade actually goes into. I also use the gold to paint the band that holds the top knot together and I also do some freehand of a little lightning bolt on the front facing side of the sheath. That's obviously optional, you don't have to do that if you don't want to but I wanted to add a little bit as it looked a bit stark to me so I thought I'd add a little bit of a flavour on there. then applied a nice wash of Reichland Flesh Shade over all those gold areas. Then in with some Liberator Gold just to, to add some highlights back to the gold that you just doled down with the Reichland Flesh Shade. Don't go too crazy on this, just use it on the edges. I do quite like dull down gold, that's a personal preference, but for this purpose I use it just to edge highlight.
and the only bit of yellow on this model in the guise of Avalon Sunset. Really, really cool colour. I really like this colour. It is notorious to use apparently, but once again, water it down. It may take several coats, but as long as it's thin, I believe it looks great. And we're going to use this colour to block in the little kind of weird pattern just behind the lightning bolt of the white scar emblem. Just take your time and it should be a doddle. We're on the home stretch folks and I've left the eyes to last because I'm an evil, evil person. <laughs> One quick note before we go on to the eyes though, the part where I mentioned about putting known oil on the red areas that are sticking out, that's the same for the face mark you see on this clip now and the hair of the top knot. Anyway, enough retcon in there. We use Calador Sky to base the lenses of the eyes. We'd already had a little bit of known oil in there from when we actually based the face mask. Use that to your advantage. You don't have to paint the Calador sky right up to the edges, just enough where it kind of gradiates from the blue into the black where the non oil sits in the recess areas. And with a final touch of Baharoth blue, the eyes and the model is now done. All you have to do is snap the little plastic sprues off all the components glue it together with super glue, base it the same as your other models in the army, and you are done. As always, a massive thank you to everybody who watches these videos. I really appreciate every one of you. To further support the channel, why not like the video and comment down below what sort of tutorial you'd like to see next. Hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified when my next one will be available. Thank you once again. I'll catch you all next time and don't forget to keep that hobby alive. <laughs>